Welcome to session two. In this presentation, we will discuss steps to solving a medical coding exam case study. But first, I want to introduce you to the team. First up, Mr. Sandeep. Mr. Sandeep coming to you live from Abu Dhabi. He is an AMCI co-lead instructor. Next up, Miss Eva coming to you live from the state of Florida. She is also a co-lead instructor and the intern coordinator. And finally, myself, Mrs. J, I'm the curriculum director at AMCI. Now, let's meet the AMCI interns. We have Miss Anubama, followed by Miss Carla, Miss Courtney, Miss Dolly, Miss Vivian, and Miss Melissa. Now that we're all acquainted, let's go ahead and talk about the goals of the presentation. We only have one female system. We will review scenarios from the female genital system. Now let's talk about how to solve a multiple choice case study scenario, the AMCI way for the board exam. This is how we do it. We teach you to highlight your key terms and this key on the right tells you the colors that you should use and for what. A yellow highlighter should be used for diagnoses, all diagnoses, signs and symptoms. The green will be for procedures. So if you have a green highlighter, the green will be used to highlight only procedures. And pink, these are inclusive or bundled items. All right, once you've done your highlighting, you're gonna have to document your inventory. That's your procedures, diagnoses, and select a primary code. Which diagnosis is primary? Which procedure is primary? Then you're going to review all pertinent guidelines. And finally, the code that best matches your inventory list is often the correct code or a code that is pertinent to a guideline that will be your best code. All right. So here are some do nots. When you're highlighting, you can kind of get discombobulated. So we've compiled some things that you don't even have to highlight. Number one, don't highlight things observed by the physician because you cannot code for them. Number two, don't highlight closures. If a provider or surgeon is closing up a surgical site, there's no need to highlight it. However, if it involves a skin procedure or skin defect closure, you may definitely have to code that. So if it's closing a surgical site other than skin defects or wounds or lesions, you do not code it or highlight it. Also, you don't highlight bleed control, hemostasis, because that's pretty customary and it's bundled into the procedure code. You don't highlight drains, irrigation of the surgical site. Nope. And you don't highlight installation and removal of clamps and trocars because that these are used to open up or maintain the surgical or operative site so the physician can view what they're doing particularly if it's an open procedure. Also, you don't highlight dressings. And finally, you do not highlight surgical risks. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I think you're ready to get started. And I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Sandeep. All right, Mr. Sandeep, take it away. Okay, let's move on and let's move to the female uh, gender nerve system. And let me uh, invite Ms. Jolly. Ms. Rolly, this scenario is yours. All right, coders, what are the CPT and ICD-10 CM codes reported? 
A58671 modifier 50, C30.2, B58600, C30.2, C58615, C30.2, and D58671, C30.2. Anesthesia general with LMA. Preoperative diagnosis, patient requesting sterilization. Postoperative diagnosis, sterilization. Procedure performed, tubal ligation with bilateral fallopian ring application. Counts, needle, sponge, and instrument counts were correct. Intraoperative me medications, 0.25% marcaine with epinephrine. Operative findings. The left ovary was mildly adhered to the side of the uterus. The right ovary appeared normal. Both tubes appeared normal. The upper abdomen appeared normal. There was a small subserosal fibroid approximately 1 to 1.5 centimeter on the left upper aspect of the uterus. Description of procedure. After informed consent, Ms. Matthews was taken to operating suite number four and a general anesthesia was administered. She was placed in the dorsal lithotomy position. She was sterilely prepped and draped in the usual manner. A sponge stick was placed vaginally. An infra-umbilical incision was made and a non-bladed trocar and sheath were placed. Proper placement was confirmed and insufflation was performed. A suprapubic incision was then made and the suprapubic trocar and sheath were placed under direct visualization. Findings were made as noted above and the right tube was ligated with the fallope ring and then the left. Pictures were taken to document proper placement. All instruments were removed and gas was allowed to escape. The sheaths were removed. Marcaine with epinephrine was, were placed again at the incision sites and they were closed with monocryl in a subcuticular manner. The patient was allowed to emerge from the anesthesia and was transferred to the post-anesthesia care unit in stable condition. Okay, coders, your time starts now.
Kudos, two and a half minutes. Thank you, Miss Jolly, reading that scenario for us. And Kudos, as I've said before, uh, don't get intimidated when you see a long scenario. I would also want to uh, remind you that don't get uh, so uh, like feel like this is going to be easy when you see a small scenario because these can be a tricky ones so be forensic always i thought this one would be an easy scenario i thought everyone would uh, come uh, with the correct answer but i see in the chats this uh, a mixed response i can see all the four alphabets a b c d as well so let's move on and let's solve the scenario Let's code. So the keywords, post-operative diagnosis patient came for the sterilization. The procedure performed is a tubal ligation, tubal ligation with a bilateral fell open ring application. General anesthesia was given. Patient was placed in a dorsal lithotomy position. Infra umbilical incision was made. This is one of the incision made. And then another incision was a suprapubic incision that was made. The right tube was ligated with falpo ring, fallow, fallow ring, and then the left was done. All instruments was removed. Correct answer to this mystery question is option D. Let me have a look into the chats. Let me see your responses. I think this is going to be an aha moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will explain that. Okay. So let's solve the scenario. The procedure performed tubal ligation with bil uh, bilateral falpororing, fal fallopen ring insertion, diagnosis inventory. We are having sterilization procedure performed. As I said, uh, you remember I've said like two incisions was actually made. One was a uh, infra umbilical incision, one was a suprapubic incision. This is where the suprapubic incision was made, and this is where an uh, infra umbilical incision was made. So uh, two incision was made. One incision was uh, used to place the non-bladed trockers. So trockers are actually the instruments which are used for uh, laparoscopic procedures. They make small incisions or punctures like incisions to uh, put the laparoscope and know what's happening inside. Or in the infra umbilical incision over here, these are made through uh, through which the procedure will be made, uh, will be performed. So this is one diagrammatic image. And this is how a uh, tubal ligation is done. And this is the falpo ring, falpo, uh, fallopen ring, and uh, it is uh, the fallopen tubes are ligated in this manner. Yes, yes. So let's move and let's look into the option C, 58615. Why? is 58615 wrong because this one is coding for occlusion of a fallopian uh, tube. This one is not coding for a ligation of the fallopian tube. This one is for occlusion. Yes, these two words might be similar, but it is a different procedure actually performed. So this is one for the occlusion of fallopian tubes uh, by the device uh, through a vaginal or suprapubic approach. Once again, the approach is uh, wrong as well in the code 58615. That's wrong answer. Let's look into the next one, 58600, which is coding for a ligation or transection of fallopian tubes, abdominal or vaginal approach, unilateral or bilateral. So in 58600, uh, the provider will ligate or ties off or the transects one or both fallopian tubes to prevent the future pregnancy. The, pro uh, the provider performs these services uh, through the abdo abdominal as well as the vaginal approach. Again, in this procedure, the approach is different to what we have. As I said, this was a laparoscopic procedure performed. You can see here an infra umbilical, I will show you. 
can see here an infra umbilical as I said two incisions was made an infra umbilical incision was made and a non bladed trocar and sheet was placed through that. It was even a non bladed one and then a supra pubic incision was also made. See over here and supra pubic trocar was placed under direct in uh, direct visualization. I hope the last image will help you uh, to have a better understanding. Of how the procedure was performed. So since the approach is a wrong one, option B is also incorrect. Now let's look into option A, 58671 with a 58 modifier and option D also is coding for 58671 without a 50 modifier. So this is actually the CPT code is actually correct, which is coding for laparoscopy surgical with occlusion of Ovidex. Ovidex is another name for the fallopian tubes by the device, such as a band, a clip, or a falloping. Falloping. I get this one wrong always. <laughs> I know <laughs> a, fa uh, a falloping. So the difference between option A and option D is that option A is having a 50 modifier. So have a forensic look into this coders. Do we need a 50 modifier for this? Have a forensic uh, look into the code language. Yes, no modifier is needed because 58 671 is coding for laparoscopic surgical with occlusion of OV ducts. So that means that it's more than one by the device. Yes. So this is coding for the both uh, both fallopian tubes. So we don't need a bilateral to indicate a bilateral procedure was performed. That will help us eliminate option A. The correct answer to this tricky mystery question is option D, 58671, set 30.2. Uh, the, does the occlusion and ligation means are the same? As I said, uh, the both the terms looks like similar, but the method which is used is actually different. A device can be used to occlude the fallopian tube. They can insert it uh, through the vagina and they can occlude the, what to say, the occlude the fallopian tube. So the purpose is the same, the outcome is the same, but both are different techniques. Okay, coders, now let's move on to the next one and let's see what we are having in the next procedure. Next uh, question. So for this, I would like to invite Ms. Carla to read the scenarios. And meanwhile, I will have a look into the chat as well. Ms. Carla, stage is all yours. What are the CPT and ICD-10 CDM codes reported? Answer A, 59841, Z33.2, 035.9, XX0. B, 59855, Z33.2, 035.9 XX0. Answer C59840 Z33.2 035.99 X.9 XX0. Answer D59856 Z33.2 035.9 XX0. Diagnosis Intrauterine pregnancy at 18 weeks with multiple fetus anomalies. Procedure DNE, anesthesia, moderate sedation. Indications, the patient is a 29-year-old gravata, one in 18 weeks with multiple fetus anomalies with desire, who desires a termination of pregnancy. Description of procedure, the patient was brought to the operating room and moderate sedation was administered by the anesthesia team. The patient was then placed in, an, in the dorsal lithotomy position and was prepped and draped in usual sterile fashion. The laminara and prostaglin, prostaglindin suppos suppositories were removed. The patient's cervix was dilated to five to six centimeters. 
there was a bulging bag that ruptured during vaginal prep. A speculum was attempted to be placed, but the fetus was already delivering into the vagina. The umbilical cord was severed at this time, and no fetal heartbeat was noted on ultrasound. Ultrasound guidance was used for the entire procedure. D gentle traction was applied, and the fetus delivered intact. There was no respiratory or cardiac effort noted. Briar forceps were then used to remove the placenta intact. There was a small amount of bleeding noted from the lower uterine segment. 20 units of pictoxin um, was added to the patient's IV to the patient's IV fluids and pressure was held against lower uterine segment for five minutes. At this time, hemostasis was noted to be excellent. The speculum was then removed and the patient was taken out of the dorsal lithotomy position after her perineum was cleansed. The patient's anesthesia was discontinued and she was brought to the recovery room in stable condition. There were no complications during the procedure. The patient tolerated the procedure well. Specimens, the specimens, the, pro, the products of conception were sent to pathology for site Cytogenics and pathologic evaluation. The plan, the patient will follow up in the outpatient clinic. All right, coders, you have two and a half minutes. Let's get it, let's code, and your time starts now. Okay, coders, that is also two minutes and 32 seconds, and the time is up. And I can see for this scenario as well, I can see all the four options A, B, C, D in my chat. And I believe this is also going to be a teachable uh, scenario. To be honest, I thought these two scenarios, you people will nail it. Let's see, let's see. This is going to be aha moment. Yeah. The keywords diagnosis per is in intrauterine 
pregnancy at 18 weeks with multiple fetal anomalies. The procedures, di uh, dilation and evacuation performed. Moderate sedation was given to the patient. The laminaria and prostaglandin suppositories were uh, removed. Patient cervix was dilated. Speculum was attempted to be placed but the fetus was already delivering into the vagina. So coders, just have a look into this particular portion. The fetus was already delivering into the vagina. This is going to be key in solving this scenario. Ultrasound guidance was used for the entire procedure. The speculum was removed. And the correct answer to this question, this tricky question as well is going to be option B. Let me have a quick look into the chat. Okay, and now let's solve this one. So procedure inventory, we are having dilation and evacuation using our vaginal suppositories. Diagnosis inventory, we are having elective termination of pregnancy and pregnancy complicated by fetal uh, abnormalities. And let me tell you what a dilation and evacuation procedure is actually. Dilation and evacuation is uh, in this procedure is the dilation of the cervix and the surgical evacuation of the uterus after the first trimester of the pregnancy. This is a method of abortion as well as common procedure which is used after the miscarriage to remove the pregnancy tissues. So there's another procedure as well which is known as a uh, dilation and curettage. Uh, which is actually a little bit similar, but in dilation and curettage, what the physician do is that they will place a curette in the uh, endocervical, uh, endocervical canal and pass into the uterus. And the uterine cont uh, contents are removed by rotating the curette and gently scrapping the uterus until the product of conceptions are removed. So in evacuation, they will dilate the uterus and uh, then they will uh, remove the contents. Whereas in curettage method, they will use a curette and they will scrap it off the product of conce uh, conception uh, from the uh, from the uterus. I hope both the procedures are clear. Now let's move into the coding portion. These are our codes. And let's do some uh, churning. 58559855 uh, is for induced abortion uh, using vaginal suppositories. While 59856 is coding for induced abortion using the suppositories along with a di DNC procedure, dilation and curettage procedure. 59840 is for induced abortion using dilation and curettage alone. 59841 is for induced abortion by dilation and evacuation. Let's look into the code 59856, which is coding for induced abortion by one or more vaginal suppositories with or without cervical dilation, including hospital admission, visits, and visits and delivery of the fetus and secundaries with dilation and curettage and or evacuation. So from what I said before, coders, do you see a dilation and curettage procedures performed or an evacuation performed? You can see a uh, laminary I will show. Let me grab my highlighter. Okay, you can see the laminary and prostaglandin suppositories was used, were removed. So these are the supposed trees which were used. You can see in the code language as well, prostaglandin, laminaria. These are used uh, to induce uh, uh, delivery as well as uh, dilate the cerv cervix. And then I said, be careful at this particular portion. A speculum was attempted to be placed, but the fetus already is delivering into the vagina. So did you see anywhere a uh, dilation and curettage or evacuation perform? That's why I explained what a dilation and evacuation and dilation and curettage procedure is in the beginning. 
they didn't done any evacuation because the, uh, the product of conception or the uh, fetus was already delivered uh, with the help of the support trees. They had they didn't have to do any much work other than uh, removing those contents. They didn't have to do any evacuation or any curatage. So that's why option D is wrong one. No dilation and curatage or evacuation was performed. And option C, 59840, which is induced abortion with the dilation and curatage. Again, as I said, no dilation and curatage was performed as well. And option A, 59841, induced abortion by dilation and evacuation. That was also not performed. And the correct answer is option B, 59855. And this is a global procedure where the provider terminates a pregnancy by inserting the vaginal suppositories to induce the labor and contraction, and may also insert the laminaria to, di uh, to dilate the cervix. In this procedure, actually, the provider admits the patient to the hospital, inserts a drug and the cervical dilator, and manages the labor that follows, and delivers the fetus and the placenta. So was that an aha moment chorus? How do you feel about that? Okay, would you code, uh, would the co word curatage to be uh, be used or what kind of, yes, you can see in most of those procedures, you can see uh, the co like the procedure operative summary itself, it will be clear or the procedure which they used uh, for the abortion. Sometimes you can see the curate was inserted and the product of conceptions was scrapped off from the uterine uh, uh, wall or something. That will be clear in the operative summary. Unfortunately, I'm not having any examples for that. Once I get, I can show that to you, no issues. But here you can see definitely, you can see uh, no effort other than uh, the administration of the suppositories was given. So no other procedures was performed. Are there really long scenarios on the exam? Yes, these scenarios can be also present in the exam. Who knows, similar kind of scenarios may come. But yes, long scenarios are there. So, okay, any more questions on this scenario, coders? I think no questions. Okay, let's move on to next one. Miss Carla, once again, thanks for coming up for the second time and reading the scenario for us. Thank you. Let's move to the next. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep, for those AMCI amazing and awesome explanations. Miss Eva, for being the orchestrator and conductor of the best interns on the planet. Yes, I said it. Miss Melissa, Anubama, Courtney, Carla, let's get it, let's code, Dolly and Miss Vivian. And let's not forget our interns in the chat led by Miss Biji. And you, the students, you all are simply the best and we appreciate you. And we will see you next time for more great scenarios. You don't want to miss it. And thank you for participating in the AMCI Medical Coding course. Until next time.